field of science, genetics did not begin until 1866, the year that an Augustinian monk named Gregor Mendel published a landmark paper on inheritance in pea plants. Mendel's laws of inheritance help us predict the phenotypes of offspring from the genotypes of the parents. One of Mendel's laws, the law of independent assortment, was based on two trait breeding experiments, crosses in which he tracked two completely different traits at the same time. Mendel wanted to know what would happen if true breeding plants with round yellow seeds, big R, big R, big Y, big Y, were crossed with true breeding plants with wrinkled green seeds, little r, little r, little y, little y. The R gene controls seed shape. Having a dominant R results in round seeds, and being homozygous recessive, little r, little r, results in wrinkled seeds. For seed color, having a dominant Y results in yellow seeds, and being homozygous recessive, little y, little y, results in green seeds. Mendel asked, is the inheritance of seed shape independent of the inheritance of seed color? That is, do the alleles assort independently? If Mendel's hunch was right, the distribution of the alleles of one gene into gametes would be independent of the distribution of the alleles of the other gene. So all possible combinations of the alleles would be found in the gametes. The plants of the next generation are called F1 hybrids, and Mendel crossed large numbers of them. Again, if the alleles assort independently into gametes, all four different gamete possibilities would be produced in equal proportions. A Punnett square is useful in predicting the genotypes and phenotypes in the next generation, the F2 plants. The genotypes of the sperm and eggs are placed along the sides of the Punnett square. Sperm and eggs are then combined systematically within the grid to create diploid individuals. Based on the genotypes in each square, the phenotypes are filled in. The Punnett square depicts the phenotypic ratios of alleles that are assorting independently. That is, 9 out of 16 F2 individuals would have round and yellow seeds, 3 out of 16 would have round and green seeds, 3 out of 16 would have wrinkled and yellow seeds, and 1 out of 16 would have wrinkled and green seeds, an overall ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. What did Mendel actually see? From hundreds of F2 plants examined, he found a very similar ratio. From the data, he could conclude that the inheritance of seed shape is indeed independent of the inheritance of seed color. Mendel made similar crosses for various combinations of the seven traits he studied. His results led him to propose the law of independent assortment, which states that when gametes form, the two alleles of any given gene segregate during meiosis independently of any two alleles of the other genes. Independent assortment occurs during meiosis during the formation of gametes. Using two sets of chromosomes, we can follow the assortment of the alleles of two genes, R and Y, located on different chromosomes. This cell is heterozygous for both genes, big R, little r, big Y, little y. During meiosis I, the pairs of homologous chromosomes line up randomly at the midplane of the cell, called the metaphase plate. Both blue chromosomes may line up on one side of the plate, or they may line up on opposite sides of the plate. The chromosomes themselves assort independently. How one chromosome pair lines up on the plate does not affect how another lines up. As meiosis I continues, the chromosomes in the pairs separate from each other and migrate to opposite poles of the cell. The cells divide. In meiosis II, the sister chromatids migrate to opposite poles of the cell. The cells divide, producing four haploid gametes per set. Each original diploid cell produced a different set of gametes based on the independent assortment of chromosomes in meiosis I. In pea plants, it turns out that the seed shape gene, R, is located on chromosome pair 7, while the seed color gene, Y, sits on chromosome pair 1. Mendel's law of independent assortment holds true for the alleles of genes located on different chromosomes, as in this example, but may not apply to a pair of genes located relatively close to each other on the same chromosome. Two genes very close together on a single chromosome typically travel together, rather than independently. In this example, the big A and big B alleles are always found together in the gametes, as are the little a and little b alleles. In contrast, 
Genes that are far apart on the same chromosome are often separated from each other by recombination events in meiosis called crossing over. The farther apart they are, the more likely crossing over will occur between them, allowing the alleles of the two genes to assort independently during meiosis.